I want to ask you both because this is, I would say, arguably the gayest Star Wars I think, by a considerable <laughs> margin. And uh, are you excited no. about that? Are you Not bracing the yourself? Star Wars. Not the- <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty gay, let's be honest. <laughs> The first few episodes of The Acolyte are out, and the results are, well... And now the studios are accusing fans of review bombing the show. But is it really review bombing when we see good reviews among all the bad ones? And who can we really trust to give us the straight skinny on whether this show is good or bad? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the dumpster fire that is Disney Star Wars. Before we get into this, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out with continuing to grow, and it's totally free. In many of my other videos, I've made mention of Rotten Tomatoes and its critic versus audience scores. It's been an unusually excellent barometer of whether a show or movie is bad or not. But it's also been a great measure of whether something is woke or not. And just based on that Leslie Headland interview, we kind of know what direction the show is going to lean towards. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Yeah, it's really going there again. As I mentioned in my last video, the show makes subtle and not so subtle messages espousing the alphabet soup ideology. So far in the first two episodes, we get the subtle messaging through the characters' wardrobes. Most of them are seen wearing yellow while female Rick James dons the purple hood. Both yellow and purple signify non-binary within the alphabet soup flag. Chris Gore has also dropped the bombshell that will get a lesbian birth and that the force is now completely female. Now, if they focused on the story and character development and hired talented, experienced writers, I would have no problem with this. But they are blatantly pushing a message and agenda instead of good story and character development. There's a right way and a wrong way of pushing an ideology within the medium of cinema and television. For example, take a movie like Dallas Buyers Club, which I mentioned in my last video. That movie was filled with political and gender ideology, but the writing was top-notch and gave us a great story that audiences could get invested in. The character development and acting on the part of Jared Leto gave us a transgender character who you could really root for because he was fully fleshed out and well-written. And then we get garbage like The Acolyte that contains none of those elements. And now the studio and its shills in the mainstream media have taken to attacking the fans, just as I predicted in my fan baiting video, which you can watch by clicking the link on the top right corner now. As reported by Screen Rant and other outlets, apparently the fans are review bombing the show. This show is a huge disrespect of the audience. In one of the first reviews I dropped on this channel for the movie Top Gun Maverick, I mentioned filmmakers' respect for their audience. When Tom Cruise came out before the movie to thank fans for watching his movie, that showed a great respect and deference for the audience. Seth Rogen and Martin Scorsese did the same thing prior to Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem and Killers of the Flower Moon. The point here is that Disney wholesale really doesn't respect its audiences. We've seen the utter disdain Disney has shown families with young children over the past several years. They push gender ideology down the throats of audiences, largely driving them away. Parents don't want their kids learning about gender and sex ideology before they're more mature. It seems like Disney wants to replace parents as the primary educator of children, and that's a terrible idea. Sheer fucking hubris. The hubris of Disney thinking it can do better than parents in raising children is just shocking, and they seem to be continuing this trend with the latest Star Wars show, The Acolyte. When fans call them out on their bad writing, they then turn to insulting and attacking the fans. It's actually pretty damn childish if you ask me. These are the most thin-skinned people on planet Earth. They can't take criticism for their bad writing and like a petulant child, they throw a temper tantrum. How about hiring good writers with some actual life experience instead of these soy boy woke millennial hipsters? Actually, I just had a great idea. Since most millennials and Gen Z writers lack life experience, why doesn't Disney hire some veterans? This would make perfect sense. Real people who have been to war can retell their harrowing experiences in a metaphorical way. 
the Iraq and Afghanistan war stories that we've gotten, like Green Zone and Lone Survivor, could be adapted in a galaxy far, far away. And since we know books and movies such as Lone Survivor kicked ass, we know they would work very well within the Star Wars universe. And there's tons more stories out there to tell. For example, one of my friends who was a captain in the Army Rangers told me about some wild stuff like the burn pits in Iraq. The military, when they would find precursor chemicals in their search of chemical weapons, would dig pits, dump the chemicals in, and burn them, causing all sorts of health and environmental havoc. You could easily do a story about the Empire doing the same thing when building the Death Star or their Star Destroyers. And that's a way to throw ideology into the story, but do it in an impactful and meaningful way. The point is, hiring veterans as writers that have seen war would generate some kick-ass stories in the Star Wars universe. They could get good stories and still throw in political ideology. Everybody wins. But Disney is run by weak, beta-cuck progressives who wouldn't last five minutes in basic training, let alone war, and they show a huge disdain for those in uniform, so I doubt that this would ever happen. Hey, at least I provided a potential solution to the problem facing Disney and Star Wars. But what do you guys make of Disney attacking the fans of the show? Do you really think it's review bombing? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one! Before you go, I do want to throw a big cheers and shout out to all our men and women in uniform. You made this video possible by defending my freedom to express my opinions, and without you, none of this would be possible. So a big thank you to all of you.